Hey Kurgiers, Robo here, and welcome back to the last part of the Alterna Mega Amiibo boss series. Aye aye, Captain! Wait, 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 what? Wait a, wait a second. Wait, what? Biggest? What? And then we glue these pieces of foam board together, with hot glue to each side that has been cut at a 45 degree angle for a flush fit and yeah this is gonna be big. Well no turning back now, so next up is the face. Using a square of 17 by 17 centimeters made from 8 mm thick MDF as the base. Then we decorate it with a raised detail cut from this sheet of craft paper. This will then surround the 5mm EVA foam face for the stamp. Cutting out the square from the sheet was pretty easy. But tracing it and then carefully cutting out the crevices was a whole different story. Especially since the offsets are only as thick as these marker lines. So about 2 to 3 millimeters. Luckily with patience, effort and a very sharp scalpel we can cut out all of the pieces. Then, because we kept the edges within the sheet, we can now use these to get the perfect alignment for the outer edge. Next, with that down, we take out the inner piece and put glue on all of the pieces that we want to attach. Then we put it back into the hole and once the glue is right, we can pull out all of the crevices. Then with some jams for the four rivets. We got the perfect Octostam face. With the start of the detailing already done by those rivets on the face, the next detail will be this top edge made from a bottle of chewing gum. This edge will then be combined with a rounded inner edge made from some more MDF. This will then be glued to the plastic ring and finished off with a foam board bottom to get this very special plug for the underside of the stamp. Then to make this underside, we first cut out this recess. This will then be replaced with these layers of foam boards. Once this has been glued in, we start to apply these 2mm at 5mm craft foam panels. Three pieces per chamfered corner. And then these four arrows that surround the middle. And finally in the center we will then glue the circle made from that chewing gum bottle. On the other side we cut away a 5cm wide circle to make for the spawn point. So now that I think about it, technically you can place the original Fry Amiibo into that spawn point. <laughs> Never thought about that. Yeah. 
Anyway, underneath this hole, we can then glue this metal mesh. Although here we use some craft paper to close off the hole, but in the final version we will use a little sheet of acrylic that we had clouded up with some sandpaper to back up the metal mesh. But you may ask, why trade it for acrylic? That's because we are going to be using lights in this Mega Amiibo. Oh come on, don't be like that. This time at least it's something new. Instead of the individual LED bulbs, we use a 5 volts LED strip. Huh? Huh? This we had then resoldered from a USB plug to a wire with a button, for which we just made this hole. This wire will then lead back to a 45 volts battery case. This will provide enough power for the LED strip, and because it's already pre-programmed, we can use it to light it up in all kinds of colors, and especially a rainbow pulsing effect. To be honest, that's the whole reason why I got it. Just as soon as we've wrapped the LED strip around this box on the inside of the stamp. This will make sure that all of the LEDs are facing outwards. So with a little bit of soldering and some heat shrink around the wires, we glue the battery case on the inside of the stamp, which we later placed on another point for balancing purposes. And with the transparent 3D printed fan temporarily placed in the back, we get this nice light show. All controlled from the outside, so we only need to open the stamp up to change the batteries. But right now the stamp will just fall over each time, so using this little plug that we had made from foam board and wood, we use a heck of a lot of glue to secure the stamp in its upright spinning position. Although, to be honest, if I made another one, I would probably make the whole thing out of wood. The foam board can still be a little flimsy. Then, for the final decorations, we have another raised edge, this time from poster board for the back. We finish this off with some small gems as some more rivets. Then some coffee stirring sticks for some more details on the chamfered edges. Yeah, and finally, we've prepped all kinds of panels using wires, more metal mesh, just straight up EVA foam, and we had also prepared these cloudy acrylic squares for more places where light can go through. And finally, we have all of the decorations on all of the sides of the Octostam. But this is an ink based battle. So, next up is this spinning bit of ink for the top of the Mega Amiibo base. We already started to sculpt this spinning ink from some air drying clay, but to really upgrade the sculpt, we can add these holes that appear in the ink from all of the centrifuge of ores. Simply said, from all of the spinning. We'll then fill in all of the edges with some more air drying clay to hide the aluminium foil base. And once this is all dry, and all of it sanded with some 400 grit sandpaper, we are good to glue the ink to the base. But still, Fry doesn't really fight you with the Octostamp itself, she primarily fights you with her eels. So what is a boss battle Mega Amiibo for Fry without her eels? So with an aluminium foil base already prepped and a nice layer of epoxy clay, we make the main body for the eels. And using the extra clay, we add the fin around the back, the tail and the belly. Once the clay had dried, we give it some extra attention on the finishing with some files for the fin.
and an 800 grit sandpaper over the whole body. Then we add the antenna to the snout. And we use two smooth gems for the eyes. That's the beauty of my plan. Because I now spend some extra time on this one, we can make a mold to cast more. So from this Lego mold box, We get a silica mold that we can then use to cast all of the eels. Giving us the ability to make one after another. Finally giving us 6 eels. And this satisfying pull from our mixing bucket. Nice. Then each of these eels is coated in a white primer using our airbrush. And for the first time in this project, we get to see Fry herself. In all of her 3D printed glory, she too gets a coat of primer. Same as the Octo Stamp. However, because of the metallic finish later, we use a black primer. But not just any metallic coating will do. We've teased it a little bit in the last project, but the Octo Stamp will get some metallic color shifting paints. So with this blue to violet paint, we spray all of the chamfered edges and the outer edges of the sides. While we keep working on the three layers that the color shifting paint requires, we also get to add a coat of acrylic yellow over the ink on the base. But after a few layers of acrylics, I did not really like where the ink was heading. So I had to make a quick change of direction and use my airbrush to apply a primer and then some yellow miniature paints. Making for a much nicer finish and also making sure that we have the same shade of yellow that we also use on Fry later on. And this also allows me to use the same yellow miniature paints for the face of the Octo Stamp. As well as the lowest level at the bottom of the stamp, tying it all together. Back to Fry, next up is the white for our pants and her socks. Once those have enough layers, the white is then mixed with a monster brown to make the base coat for her mask. With a little bit of bone white for her teeth earrings. And speaking of teeth, these jumpers on the eels have been made from the ends of some toothpicks. And not just some, but a lot of toothpicks. After which, and a yellow airbrush coat on the body and a purple one for the inside of the mouth, we finally get to use more of that white for the teeth themselves, as well as the eyes. Then we painted more gold on our emblem and the chain around our waist. <coughs> <sighs> Fine. 
I love gold! <laughs> but hopefully the gold doesn't distract you too much to also notice the wood texture that we added on the mask. Which then gets covered up with the white details on the mask. Uh, what we don't do for art. At least we then get to add the yellow to our little vest and more importantly her tentacles. But after that fun interaction, we had to use this yellow to make a lighter shade to make all of the deep cut logos on the ink. Luckily, this is finally the last one for which we have to do this. Although, I'm still mad that we made a whole mold to make our own deep cut stamps. And in the end, because of the difficult shapes of the ink, we didn't even get to use them. Now I just have two deep cut stamps laying around. What do I have to do with that now? At least after all of that, we get to paint on the black for Fry's eye masks. With a little white line over her eyes to make for the base of her eyelashes. Next are some purple gradients for her fingers and toes. And a similar gradient also uses barbarian flesh for her ears and nose. And a little tiny bit of purple is also used for a rope around her emblem. And remember that transparent poncho for shiver? Fry, of course, gets her own one with a bit of heat shaped plastic packaging and a transparent yellow paint. Then we finished the eyelashes with some yellow at the base and some peach colored paint at the tips. Next we finally get to add the orange to her headdress. The same orange is then also used for the fins of the eels. First adding this offset that mirrors each of the waves in the fin. After which we finish these up with some little orange circles to make for the camouflage on the eels. While that dries, we use some diluted purple on the gradient of Fry's tentacles. With the gradient finished, we use a little bit of skeleton bone for the ropes around the tentacle. And with that, we finished Fry! I think now we've given her enough attention to go back to the stamp. Continuing where we left off with a dark stone for the concrete texture we made with some baking soda and mud parch. For the back... And some panels on the sides. Which once dry, gets dry brushed with an ash grey. The face is then finished with a bright pink, one on each eye. And the mouth. Then a bright silver is dry brushed over all of the metal mesh and is then evenly painted over the EVA foam panels. By now we've let the eels dry long enough to be able to start to apply the purple details on the masks. Adding these eyelashes on these circles around each eye, which is then connected by this line over the bridge of the snout. And with a finishing coat of white over the eyes, which we then let dry, we get to add a pink pupil to the mask and a yellow pupil for the mirage eels, with a little yellow pupil for the mask ones too. With all of that painting done, we start to glue some of the transparent pieces that we wanted to protect from all of the painting. Starting with the 3D printed fan for the back, Yeah. 
And at last we remove the protective plastic from all of the panels. Then let's add back the batteries and ta-da! But we're not done yet! We still have the gloss varnish to add over the eels. A gloss for the ink too. And lastly, also on the ink at the base of the stamp and the face of the stamp. While those dry, we use more of that mod part to add the stickers and posters around the octo stamp. With these attached, we finally get to glue the stamp to the base. So, after making sure that we added the NFC chip, we added a crap ton of super glue to the ink. And with the accelerator on the base, we press the two together. A little positive surprise was also the idea to use these bamboo skewers that we had originally only added to have a hold during painting, to use these as pegs to mount the eels to the stamp. So, with two holes for the two spinning on the ink, we then add holes for the rest around most of the corners of the box, and with some more super glue and accelerator, we add each of the eels. <laughs> then, with the last one placed in the wrong corner, don't worry, we'll fix that later, we tested Fry's placement and roughed up the surface to finally super glue her on top of the octa stamp. <laughs> it, it still amazes me to see that this thing is actually only 80% of what it would be with an official amiibo. Oh boy. And with that, we've completed our Alterna Boss Battle Mega Amiibo series with the Eel Deal Fry Mega Amiibo.
Hey Career Gears, Robo here. And with that, we've got our newest and biggest amiibo officially done. So, which one did you guys like the most? Shiver? Fry? Or Big Man? Leave your answers down in the comments. You might have also seen it during the showcase, but a very special thank you to Cool Kitten for joining the Korea Bombs on Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting us. And also, don't forget to join the WVD Discord server to receive your special role and to also get the chance to hang out with lots of other Korea Gears. But this is not just for, for Patreons. You guys can also join in the Discord server and hang out with the other fans and chat around Splatoon or just any other stuff and just have a good time there. As always, it will be linked in the description just like with any of my other videos. But with that, that's going to be all from us for now. Keep those creative gears turning and we will see you guys in the next Frosty Fest themed video.